This is America's Roundtable from Washington, D.C., a weekly radio program with leading voices from America and international thinkers representing the academia, business media, think tanks, and the political arena. I am Joe Alon and Sami, your co-host, joined by Natasha Sardorj, economist and chairman of the International Leaders Summit, and guest hosts that join us on a regular basis, Becky Norton Dunlop and Maurice McTeague. This weekend, we are honored to have as one of our special guests Senator Tom Coburn, an MD. He was elected to the U.S. Senate on November 2nd, 2004. He's a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee, and the Committee on Finance. Well, Senator Coburn, you released an oversight report titled Wastebook 2012 that highlights more than $18 billion in examples of government waste. And Dr. Coburn, you also mentioned that there is approximately 200 to $300 billion a year in waste, duplication, and fraud. If you're borrowing trillions of dollars every year, you probably don't want to do this if you have to finance it on the backs of your children and grandchildren. Nine or ten million dollars a year goes to the owners of the NFL and the PGA and the National Hockey League through tax write-offs. We uh, spend 300 and some odd thousand dollars subsidizing the promotion of the consumption of caviar. The reason we put out the list every year is to show it's not hard to come up with 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 billion dollars in money that is spent that a prudent person would never spend the money for the way it's spent. And number two, they'd never spend that money foolishly when they were borrowing the money to be able to spend it. So it's, it's the frustrating aspect that Congress has ignored what the Constitution says is what the role is. And number two, has ignored their oversight role in terms of making sure we don't spend money foolishly. And the reason is nobody has a handle on it is because the government is so massive and those responsible for administering grants aren't held accountable both by their superiors within the agencies or they're not held accountable by the members of Congress in terms of doing their oversight. Uh, The way you fix it, in my mind, is you change who's in Washington. I'm appalled that I can, in a hundred examples, show $18 billion that I guarantee you 95% of the people in this country would think we shouldn't have spent the money. Indeed. Now, especially when we're borrowing it. And, and, and how, how'd that happen? It happens because we have a political class in this country that are cursed in their, in their approach to politics. In, in other words, they've been in a political limelight their whole life. And the goal is a conflicted goal of getting reelected, not doing the best thing for the country. So we're, we're handicapped by short-term thinking of the political class. Number two is the benefits that come no matter how you spend the money. If you're spending the money at home, it secondarily helps that. So with the parochial nature of our members of Congress, they're more interested in looking good to get reelected than they are fixing the problems of the country. The Honorable Edwin Meese III served as the 75th Attorney General of the United States from 1985 to 1988. He was counselor to President Ronald Reagan from 1981 to 1985. We have a parallel situation that occurred uh, some 30 years ago when Ronald Reagan was faced with a similar economic situation when he took office. And he, his uh, remedy was uh, basically four things, uh, reducing tax rates across the board. He didn't believe in in class warfare or divisiveness. Uh, Secondly, regulatory reform, third, stable monetary policies, and fourth, slowing the growth of federal spending. All of these uh, worked. Uh, We had uh, a rapid increase in employment. Uh, We had a rapid decrease in inflation, which was the problem then. Uh, And we had the start of the longest period of peacetime economic growth in the history of the country. Uh, By contrast, today, uh, the current administration has taken the opposite tack in every one of those areas. How can we prevent judicial activism from happening? One, of course, is the president who nominates uh, candidates for the judiciary. And secondly, uh, the Senate, which has to approve them. Uh, And uh, these are the two bodies that need to be held responsible for the kind of judges we get. Judges that, that would be faithful to the Constitution rather than those who would engage in judicial activism. Congressman Tom Price, in a televised statement last week, you mentioned, as a physician, I can tell you that doctors and patients of this land are very troubled because this law, just like yesterday, hasn't changed today. 
and it violates every single principle that we hold dear as a nation in health care. Uh, we need a system that is accessible for folks, affordable, of the highest quality, is responsive for, for people, uh, continues to promote the highest amount of innovation, and allows patient choices. And if you look at each and every one of those, uh, we can see that the law of the land now, uh, as determined by the Supreme Court of the United States, uh, violates each and every one of those principles. Becky Norton Dunlop is Vice President at the Heritage Foundation in Washington, D.C., and former Director of the White House Cabinet in President Ronald Reagan's administration. Constitution is not something that allows the government to grant freedoms to the people, but it's the people it's the people of the United States of America, the citizens of the United States of America, that have granted the national government limited power. And unfortunately, in too many instances in recent days, we have lost sight of this. It says, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, the rule of law, justice is important. We know it's unique in America. Ensure domestic tranquility, in other words, uh, provide for the safety of our citizens. This is why we have local police forces. Provide for the common defense. Provide is a key word there. In other words, the national government is supposed to provide for the defense of our nation and our people. And then the next phrase is promote the general welfare. Not provide welfare. Provide Indeed. welfare, but promote the idea that the people of the United States should have the opportunity uh, to ensure their own welfare and well-being and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity well this is in danger today securing the blessings of liberty i mean we have so many national laws federalized laws and regulations that government that govern so much of our lives this is not in keeping with the idea of the constitution now we have an entrepreneur and business leader mr harris rosen who is the president and CEO of Rosen Hotel and Resorts. Uh, the United States of America doesn't have a health care uh, system. We have a sick care system. And we've created a health care system. What's so amazing is that we did it for all the right reasons, and we've been blessed along the way. And because we've saved over the last 20 years, if you, if you compare our cost per covered life with the national cost per covered life, we, we estimate our savings to be somewhere 220 to $225 million range, which is enormous particularly for a small company. If the United States of America, if all of the businesses, public sector, private sector, academe, military, if they all replicated our template, emphasis on wellness, no smoking, emphasis on, on weight reduction, emphasis on, on lower cholesterol and, and watching uh, one that, that was uh, diabetic, the United States of America would save over a trillion dollars in health care and the government would have no involvement whatsoever other than Medicare and Medicaid and if that were handed over to the states, we'd be in a lot better shape. Uh, Molly McTeague is a seasoned expert on government reform, holding seven different ministerial portfolios during his nine years in the New Zealand Parliament. McTeague was one of the architects of the New Zealand Miracle. We know that New Zealand abolished the inheritance tax or so-called death tax. How did you go about doing that? The only way to, to approach changes in taxes is to have a comprehensive approach and look at the entire tax system. And in my view, the purpose of it should be exclusively to raise the revenue that the government needs to fund its activities. And when you look at taxes like death duties, they're about redistribution of income rather than about revenue gathering. What those mechanisms tend to do is that they distort decision making and they are prejudicial to some businesses as opposed to others. In fact, Jim, uh, I'm sure that you and business leaders across America heard this statement from President Obama when he said, if you've got a business, you didn't build that. What was the first thought that came across your mind when you heard this statement from President Obama? I didn't believe it. <laughs> I had to go to the Washington Post to reread it. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe what that guy was saying. I mean, the audacity and to tell us business leaders that, that we didn't build our businesses, that the government or some friend or something uh, helped us. Somehow we didn't have anything to do with it. It floored me. It, it put me in the back seat. Well, I hate that estate tax, that debt tax. It's just a stranglehold over the U.S. business 
man, uh, anybody who's successful. Dead people don't vote. In principle, this is pure confiscation of assets by the government, right. which is typical of uh, communist states in the past. Well, my children may have to sell one of my hotels in order to get the money to pay the inherit the uh, to pay the estate taxes. I just think it's it's just a burden that they sh that they shouldn't have to go through. Brian Carney is a member of the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal and the editor of the editorial page for the Wall Street Journal Europe. How serious are the issues in Europe? Well, it certainly prevents it from getting a lot worse very soon. And I don't think the bailouts by themselves are really going to solve the, the problems that, that Europe faces. And European governments have been spending too much for too long, and they've been borrowing that money because they're unwilling or unable to collect enough taxes. What these countries really need is they need profound economic reforms to, uh, to get back on their feet. And the question is whether there is the political will and the political courage to push through reforms to the European welfare state that they need to, to fundamentally get their economies on a sounder footing. We are pleased to be joined by Matthew Kaminsky, who is a member of the Wall Street Journal's editorial board in New York. People think that we've, um, because of Iraq, um, it's very hard for the U.S. to do anything in the Middle East anymore, especially militarily. So why do Arabs keep asking, why do Arab countries keep asking us to take, take the lead? Why do the Saudis and the Arab League ask us, you know, in Libya, again, Syria now, to come and take the lead? Because we remain the world's superpower. We are undisputed regional power, and it'd be nice if we acted like it. I think leading from behind is, is a very dangerous idea, and in, in theory, but also very much in practice in, in the Middle East. And not to say everywhere else in the world. I mean, we, you know, thanks to American leadership, you know, the world is a much more prosperous and more stable place over the last 60 years. Thank you so much for joining us, Congressman Hillskamp. Welcome to America's Roundtable this weekend. A pleasure to join both of you. I'd love to visit about some issues. Well, I have recently introduced a bill that deals with a, a, one of the fastest growing programs in, in Washington, and that's our food stamp program, also called SNAP. And uh, that would, instead of having Washington run a program, uh, it would turn it over to the states uh, for their administration taking care of uh, the poor and, and needy that I, I think uh, local government's the, the best way to approach that. And 46.7 million Americans on food stamps, the number's growing from 19 million and uh, less than about 10 years ago. The spending has gone up uh, almost 300% during that time period. And there are very few uh, controls on that and, and limits and, and protections on the fraud and abuse side. And I think, again, our states and, and our local cities could do a much better job administering that than, than the bureaucracy in Washington. We are delighted to be joined by Jeffrey Van Orden. First elected as member of the European Parliament in 1999, Jeffrey Van Orden leads the conservative members of the European Parliament team in East of England. He's a former senior British Army officer with wide international and operational experience. Uh, but of course, when we look at Libya and of course the terrible uh, events uh, in recent days and the, the murder of the American ambassador, the fact is, that we've removed a tyrant from power, or rather we've helped remove a tyrant from power, but what has come in its stead? Uh, well, first of all, we have to recognize that there were, there were democratic elections which brought into office very reasonable and very moderate politicians in Libya, but it is quite clear that more widely in Libya there are groups still at large uh, that aren't properly under the control of the central government there, and I think that's the particular concern. Dr. Daniel Kaufman is a senior fellow in the Global Economy and Development Program at the Brookings Institution in Washington, D.C. And on average, we found that a country with higher level of corruption, like Greece or Italy, was likely to have a fiscal deficit which was higher by eight percentage points of GDP than a country which had high levels of integrity like the Nordics and so on. John Willman is the editorial consultant and former UK business editor and associate editor of the Financial Times. Now, if you let Greece go, there'll be more losses for the banks in Europe that have lent them money. There'll be losses for the central banks which have lent them money in some cases. And then that causes a crisis in those countries too. So 
it might be very unpalatable, but it's much, much cheaper to try and try and try to keep Greece in the euro than to let them fall out. Nobody knows quite what the cost is of letting them fall out, but we just know it's going to be much, much bigger. And it could lead to a 10-year recession, and then it could also lead to the sorts of conflict, you know, the, uh, the conflicts, ethnic conflicts, national conflicts, that Europe has seen all too much of in the past. So suddenly the talk of we must let Greece go dried up because people suddenly realize what the cost might be. Kyle Wingfield joined the Atlanta Journal Constitution as an opinion columnist in May 2009. The move to Georgia was a homecoming for the Dalton native who spent the previous four and a half years as an editorial page writer for the Wall Street Journal based in Brussels, Belgium narrative that the Obama administration has been trying to push in recent years, that particularly with the killing of Osama bin Laden, that al-Qaeda is on the run and that, and that we're able to wrap up this, this long war on terror, not that they will call it a war, a war on terror. Mm -hmm. um, the, the events in Benghazi and, and another murder just this week in Yemen um, right. indicate something quite to the contrary, that, uh, the, that we have not won militarily or uh, through some sort of hearts and minds campaign um, against this group. It is proving to be resilient, and we, may, we have made some progress, um, but it's not nearly as, as much as I think the Obama administration wants the American public to believe. So that this came out and that, you know, that this was such a brazen, unprovoked assault in Benghazi is, is, is a big deal. This is America's Roundtable. Visit us at americasrt.com. Follow us on Twitter at America's RT. You can find us on YouTube and Facebook. Like and share.